if, if indwelling sin, if Romans 3 is true, if all of sin and fall short of the glory of God, that means even our, our best experts probably are missing something. You've talked about these cultural narratives, and you're so poignant to mention these. And I wonder, is there another narrative that says we have to speak to an expert mm. or hear truth from an expert, whatever that is defined as, for it to be true? Yeah, that's, what I, that's a great question, Josh. And it's always hard, too, because as a pastor, I think sometimes people, it's, you know, it's an expert culture. And, mm -hmm. and particularly... Uh, being a church, Redeemer Presbyterian Church in New York City, there's this expert culture mentality that's developed, you know, in the space as well. Um, I, as a Christian, particularly as a Protestant Christian, um, we believe in something, I'm going to use a big expert word here, the perspicuity of the scriptures. Mm. And that's just a fancy word to say that if you just open the Bible and read, that there's something about it that, that you'll be able to understand that can change you. This was what, uh, you know, Luther, his big thing was saying, hey, there was an expert culture in the Catholic Church in the 1500s. And he was like, you know what? I think people need to read this in the vernacular. People need to read it in their own words. Yes, it creates lots of problems and heresies. And we have lots of issues when you, when you don't have that. But there also is a, an empowerment of saying, uh, there's a simplicity of faith that, is a, that our, our Lord loves. I mean, that's why Jesus says, let the, let the little children come unto me. And there's something very simple that uh, we're allowed to, to have. We don't have to have all the answers. I even worry, I mean, what I was just talking about, all these, this was, this was stuff that was distilled for me from somebody else that I've sort of incorporated. But it, you don't have to have it all figured out. A simple faith and love and uh, care uh, can be enough. And I, I do think that in culture, there's, there, there, there's, I would argue, Josh, there's probably two nerves going on. There's the power in the masses, which is, anti-intellectual, anti-culture. I think you see that sometimes in our churches. I think you see that also in culture, which is uh, down with the institutions, down with the power of folks. And I think there's a whole vein that has destroyed institutions that way, and has created problems. I think there's another one that says, who's our uh, you know, celebrity, who's our expert, and what are they doing and how do we listen to them? And that has its own problems too. And I think neither one of those are the full answers. I think that's why uh, a Christian's constantly has to go back to what does the scripture say? If we find experts that help us on, on the scriptures, then great. But I think um, you also have to believe in the power of the word itself mm. and be able to situate that and, and have trust in that. And again, expert culture, the problem with that is if I just know enough, then my kids will be saved and then I will be saved. And that's actually a lie too. You're not saved by, you're saved by, if you're really saved by grace, saved by faith, then it's not even with the, the more ideas and the, the, more, the, uh, the more content we have, the more expert culture. We have to really believe that. I think it was, um, might have been R.C. Sproul, that he's like, even the best theologians probably are 80% wrong. Uh, and I, when I heard that, I was like, oh, what, what do you mean by that? He means if, if indwelling sin, if Romans 3 is true, if all of sin and fall short of the glory of God, that means even our, our best experts probably are missing something. That should give us pause to like, well, maybe there might be something A, I might be missing or, or wrong about, but also that expert. And so that's why we go, it goes back to uh, it's what he's done, how he's lived, who he is, and how that moves me and changes me. And I experience that. Yeah, knowledge can become a work, the acquiring of knowledge. 100%. And that, that, then we're, we're trying to earn God's love again just by being the smartest. 100%. And we live in a content-based culture where, you know, Maybe you're watching this. This is content for a lot of people. And we're, so we're, we just think, if I can just get enough. Mm. And I think there's, there's the, the scriptures are screaming at us that you know, God is with us, Emmanuel. I mean, that's what we have. That's what's important. He's come to you. He's come to us, not necessarily what we've done to him, what, what, how we've understood him. Mm. I don't think Joseph understood the Trinity. Even the Trinity, you have the Holy Spirit, the Son, the Father, all in Matthew 1. I doubt it that he understood the intricacies. Mm. So you're not, because you're not saved by your full understanding, mm -hmm. even if uh, that is the core of our faith. Yeah, yeah the gospel is a simple message. Mm. We don't need every nuance of ecclesiology and tertiary doctrines to be right with God. Which is why living that out with forgiveness and repentance 
humbly and I think will be more important in raising your child than anything else. Hey pastor, thanks for watching this video. The Focus Pastor is here to encourage you, your family, and the church. So if you like this video, hit the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us on social media or check out our website.